Hi everyone, today we are going to be talking about the four physical assessment techniques. So here are the four techniques you will be using when you do a physical assessment. Now a physical assessment could be a cardiac assessment, an abdominal assessment, a muscular skeletal assessment, or a genitourinary assessment. And I want to make sure that you guys know that generally there is no specific order for these four things. Um, if you're just looking to remember them, I have a quick little way you can remember them. If you take the first letter of this order, you get IPA. So this is just a way to remember all four of them. Like I said, there's no specific order generally. When you get a specific order, that will be when you do a focused assessment. So there's a specific order for the cardiac assessment that you need to do these in. There's a different specific order for um, the GI system. So I, I will go through some of those towards the end of this presentation, but I just want to let you know that there's no specific order unless you're doing a focused assessment. So inspection, we're going to start out with that. Usually inspection generally is the first thing that you do across the board. You kind of want to see what's going on before you kind of get hands on. Um, so for inspection, we're going to look at the color. We're going to look at the skin color. If you're doing a skin assessment, let's look at the color of the moles, you know. But overall, you're going to look at the color, the size, the shape, and the positioning. And then I also have down here gait. Gait is just the way that somebody walks. So just through inspection, through looking at something, you can uh, be able to tell if somebody's gait is off or if it's abnormal. Basically for inspection, you're just kind of looking, you're getting a gauge for what you're about to assess. Is it normal or is it abnormal? For pal patient. So this is touch. This is when you're touching something. And I want to make a note here that palpation can often get mixed up with palpitation. A palpitation is something that happens in your heart, whereas a palpate, palpation is a assessment technique. So make sure you don't get those two mixed up. So this is just sensing deep or light pressure. And right here, he is doing a um, deep pressure technique. Um, it's basically just feeling for things with varying degrees of pressure, and our degrees of pressure would be either deep or light. And in palpation, we also assess temperature. This is where, um, if your mom has ever put her hand on your forehead, that's also a palpation technique. But the big thing here is if you're doing temperature with your hand, you have to use the back of your hand. That is just the most important rule when doing temperature with your hand or feeling um, for somebody's forehead. So make sure you remember that. Percussion. This is tapping. So this is an image right here of what uh, percussion is for. And this is all about organs. So if you do this on your stomach, you can actually map out the shape and border of the organs. And you can able to tell by the sound that it makes once, it, once you tap against your fingers if it's a solid organ or a filled organ. So that's a pretty cool way, you know, as nurses. It's a simple, we have two hands. We're able to tell a lot about a person's um, internal anatomy just by using our hands. And our last step, that is auscultation, so that is listening. We can listen at the lungs, to the heart, and the bowel sounds. And what we're listening for, we're listening for the pitch. Is it high or is it low? Loudness, loudness, excuse me. Is it loud or is it dull? Um, quality of sounds and duration of sounds. How long do they last? And I told you guys I would show you this. So this is where our specific order of these steps would come into play. So for GI, we're going to inspect first, and we're going to auscultate second, and then palpate and then percuss. The reason why we auscultate second is because by palpating and percussing, we could alter some bowel sounds. So we want to make sure that we're listening to, to our patient's true stomach sounds. So palpating and percussing, Second, might cause some of those sounds to be muffled. So we want to make sure that we always auscultate second when we're dealing with GI. For muscular skeletal, we inspect, palpate, and percuss. 
If you notice here, we don't have any auscultation. There's nothing we need to listen to. And for cardiac, we inspect, palpate, and auscultate. We do not percuss in the cardiac assessments. So I just wanted to show you guys that although you may not need to memorize it in a certain order generally, if you're talking about certain focus assessments, there is a specific order. And so that's just a quick little overview of the physical assessment techniques. I hope I helped you guys out. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.